Hello, um, as an introduction to the female genital tract, um, we are going to look at some of the major clinical presentations of diseases in this system uh, before we move on to looking at the main types of pathology that can occur here. So it would be simple to divide this into local versus regional versus systemic signs and symptoms. So let's start off by looking at um, local signs and symptoms. So there can be pain as a symptom and this may be localized into the pelvic region. Uh, many entities can cause pain, one of which is the physical occurrence of torsion. Um, and often this is torsion or twisting of the ovary or sometimes with the fallopian tube as well uh, around the pedicle. And what predisposes to this is an enlarged ovary. For example, if there's an ovarian cyst, as you can see here, they're actually bilateral ovarian cysts. You can see that this makes the ovary fairly large. Um, this is actually an example of endometriosis or an endometriotic cyst. And this can predispose to torsion. Other uh, conditions that can predispose to this would also be enlargement by tumours, for example. And sometimes even infection can give rise to enlargement, such as a tubo ovarian abscess. Other types of conditions that can cause pelvic pain include infections, for example, chronic pelvic pain in pelvic inflammatory disease, and even um, conditions such as endometriosis. Another important local symptom is that of discharge. So one should always find out what is the nature of the discharge in terms of the color, the consistency, and even the smell, because this is very helpful. Um, often it is due to infectious etiologies, um, and uh, sometimes tumors can also give rise to discharge. And not to forget the possibility of just physiologic discharge. The third local symptom is that of bleeding. And this can be due to, again, a variety of causes. One must always uh, consider the possibility of just uh, functional bleeding, not really due to a physical cause. Um, and this is termed dysfunctional uterine bleeding. So you should familiarize yourselves with the terms that are used for specific uh, contexts of bleeding. For example, postmenopausal bleeding. This is always worrying because we worry about tumors. Intermenstrual bleeding and postcoital bleeding. Infections and tumours, for example, uh, carcinoma of the cervix can give rise to postcoital bleeding. And also abnormal bleeding uh, with regards to menstruation, for example, menorrhagia, heavy menses, or amenorrhea, absence of uh, menstrual bleeding. A very big category, of course, is pregnancy-related bleeding. And this one usually requires uh, pretty immediate clinical attention. The next main category is to look at regional signs and symptoms, so organs or organ systems that are close to the female genital tract, for example, the urinary tract. Uh, certain tumours, uh, famously actually carcinoma of the cervix, this can result in renal failure because of obstruction involvement of the ureters, the distal ureters, and this can give rise to obstruction, hydroureter, and then renal failure as a result. Rarely, there can be fistulas occurring, for example, between the vagina and the bladder, and this can uh, sometimes occur in tumors that affect the vagina. And this is uh, actually quite clinically devastating because it results in constant uh, urine discharge from the vagina. There can also be um, conditions that affect the gastrointestinal tract. Conditions such as pelvic inflammatory disease that gives rise to adhesions can sometimes affect the loops of bowel that are close to the uterus or close to the pelvic organs and give rise to intestinal obstruction. And one must also consider the possibility of lymph nodes, uh, certain parts of the female genital tract, namely the lower vagina as well as the vulva region, they drain into the inguinal lymph nodes. So th these may actually be a signal to diseases in the vagina or the vulva. The last part of the classification is systemic symptoms. And these would include things like fever, of course, uh, you would think of infection, loss of weight, this can be due to tumours, sometimes a very severe infection as well, and hormonal abnormalities, sometimes these can affect uh, the appearance of the patient or development of secondary sexual characteristics. 
Also, a very important um, phenomenon that I want to highlight here is the possibility of acute abdomen or even shock. Um, this can occur with ruptured organs in the female genital tract. For example, uh, ectopic pregnancy that can occur in the fallopian tube, as you can see here. This may actually rupture and bleed. Um, there's a lot of vessels, new vessels, vascular tissue around the gestational sac, and this can give rise to shock and quite severe hemorrhage, which again requires immediate surgical attention. So in a lady that is of reproductive age group, if there is acute abdomen or there is shock and hypotension, one must always consider the possibility of a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. So I just want to highlight um, some of the important uh, symptoms to pay attention to, which may actually present as medical emergencies. And these include ab acute abdomen or shock, for example, due to a ruptured uh, ectopic pregnancy, pregnancy-related bleeding, as well as uh, pelvic pain, uh, which is often acute in onset, secondary to torsion of the ovary. So these are emergencies. They will require immediate medical attention and possibly surgical attention as well. So this is a simplified um, overview of the main clinical presentations of diseases in the female genital tract. As you study more and you learn about more uh, specific symptoms and signs which can fall into these categories, do feel free to fill up uh, the mind map yourselves.